So thank you very much for coming tonight. Thank you again for having me. Thank uh, you for coming. Yes. So um, last night uh, I attended a, a lecture at the, at the university, university uh, about it was a lecture about noise. And uh, after this lecture, we went to dinner and people uh, were talking. And, and during this discussion, um, someone asked me, how, how did I get involved in making this kind of music, this kind of noise? And um, I had to admit that in the beginning, when I first started working with these sounds, my primary objective was to make, <coughs> was to make noise that uh, I belonged to a, a group of artists whose inspiration was to strike out against conventional music and to make sounds that were considered noise. And uh, through the years, the longer I did this, the more I tried to find a balance where I could make a music that is free, that doesn't follow the conventional rules of compositional music, but at the same time give the listener something that they can uh, interpret, whereas uh, free noise is just something as cathartic and, uh, and used as an excitement. I tried to balance this with, with musical sensibility. So I uh, referenced a, a composition that I heard. It was, it was uh, made by a uh, composer named Alvin Lucier, and in 1969 he created a piece of music called I Am Sitting in a Room. And in, in this piece, uh, Mr. Lucier spoke into a microphone, like this one here, and his voice uh, was uh, broadcast into a room like this. And then he had a, another microphone which was recording the sound of, of the room onto a, a tape like this one. The tape would travel like this to this machine, so there's a delay now. And the delay between the recording and the playback was equal to the length of his text. So when he finished speaking, it would then start playing again. So the text would then be broadcast into the room, and the microphone would be recording this sound now and traveling again through the tape and then being played again into the room. And it was an endless loop. And over the course of time, the voice became less present and the resonant sound of the room is what started becoming more present. And by the end of this piece, all you hear is the ringing resonance of the room, the, the, the acoustics, the acoustic properties of the room then become the tone and the voice disappears and you have just this ringing sound. And it was amazing to me that the human voice could be transformed into something that became uh, a, a, something that sounded like an electronic tone with no use of electronics and no use of effects or equipment like this. So. That was the basis of why I started using tapes like this. And so what I'll be doing tonight uh, will be a, a combination of three uh, works that I have uh, been working with. Uh, it's going to start with what I call a, a tonal study. And it's a, a, a situation where I will be uh, playing certain tones and frequencies uh, from a synthesizer that I have here. Um, you, the frequencies we played into the room, uh, I'll be recording the sound of the room at the same time and, and managing these frequencies here. Uh, that'll give me an understanding of the properties and acoustics of the room. And that, that'll take maybe five or 10 minutes of, of sound that, um, is very slow moving um, and minimal. So for those of you who uh, can appreciate a minimal classical piece of music, that's kind of like what this starts as. 
Then we move into a, a movement that is uh, what a lot of people refer to as, as drone music, where the tones now become more full, and it's less about studying the tonal frequency and more about feeling the resonant parts of these tones. I'm hoping that I'm going to create sounds based on what I've heard in the, in the beginning of this piece, that I'll know how the room will react to the tones, and we'll be able to get a, a nice uh, droning uh, feel, and kind of like a massage is what, the way I hope that this works, is that you will hear it and you'll feel the, the music, and I want you to hear it and feel it at the same time. And then at the end of uh, at this piece, my third movement, will be where I will be playing <clears throat> conventional music uh, through the PA and, and recreating Alvin Lussier's I Am Sitting in a Room, the piece that I described to you earlier, but by using music instead of voice. And the reason I would do that is because I find that using music creates uh, more of a pulsing um, movement in, in this music and I, I find it to be more uh, something that an audience can find more meaning to than the voice that I was describing earlier. So the, the, uh, the three combined pieces will total about uh, 45 minutes. That's what we will have here tonight. And uh, if we don't have any immediate questions, which I'd be happy to answer if you do, then I, I would be Go ahead, you're going to start.